you have been lied to. Now this video is probably gonna make a lot of people mad, but this is important information to get out there because there's a lot of lies within spirituality. You see, spirituality is on the rise as an alternative to mainstream religion. And while it does contain some powerful intuitive insights, such as physical reality being an illusion, it's unfortunately not guided by logic and reason. And so many of these teachings actually prevent your evolution, meaning they actually block your enlightenment. They block your power, which is the exact opposite of what they propose to do. What you might call new age spirituality is a very broad term and it can refer to a variety of beliefs and practices and it's often consisting of an eclectic mix of Eastern mysticism, Western occultism, and a hefty dose of crazy conspiracy theory like space lizards and hollow moon bases. Now, it should be obvious that beliefs like that are false, they're very crazy, but some spiritual beliefs can actually be very convincing. So I'm gonna show you five spiritual lies that you've been told and that you may even believe right now that are actually blocking you from enlightenment. If you're new here, my name is Morg, and we are here to create a new humanity and a new earth. So join our War of the Mind. Help us wake up the world by subscribing right now. And my content is controversial, so make sure that you hit the bell to turn on all notifications so that you know when something new comes out. Let's jump right into this and find out the five spiritual lies that are blocking your power. The first lie is that you should destroy your ego. Now, I'm sure you've heard this one a lot because many New Age spiritualists seem to have this vendetta against the ego and destroying your ego forms a cornerstone for many New Age believers. Well, destroying your ego is one of the worst things that you can do if your goal is to reach a higher consciousness. This is because your ego is the center of your field of consciousness, meaning it's how you're able to have a sense of self. It's responsible for your self-awareness. Your ego is exactly what allows you to rise above and control your instinctual urges. If you destroyed your ego, your consciousness wouldn't be elevated. The exact opposite would occur and you would drop down to the level of an animal and be completely run by instinct. Remember that I'm not talking about ego in the colloquial sense of the word as meaning having an inflated self-importance. The ego is simply the center of your field of consciousness and is responsible for how you have self-awareness. Jungian psychologist Marie Van Frans said, it even seems as if the ego has not been produced by nature to follow its own arbitrary impulses to an unlimited extent, but to help to make real the totality, the whole psyche. It is the ego that serves to light up the entire system, allowing it to become conscious and thus to be realized. If, for example, I have an artistic talent of which my ego is not conscious, nothing will happen to it. The gift may as well be non-existent, only if my ego notices it can I bring it into reality. Reaching a higher consciousness is not about destroying the ego. You don't want to destroy your self-awareness. It's about making the unconscious conscious and the ego is your center of your field of consciousness. However, even though you shouldn't destroy your ego, you also should not identify with it. You are not your ego. The ego is your tool. Think about it like this. If you want to create a painting, a paintbrush is a powerful tool. It's not you. You don't want to identify with the brush. You aren't the brush. But you don't want to get rid of it either. The same goes for the ego. It's a powerful tool. Spiritualism has misunderstood and instead of not identifying with the ego, they try to destroy it. Don't do that. You don't want to destroy the ego, but you also don't want to identify with it. Also, there's nothing wrong with temporarily bypassing the ego, which is a completely different thing from destroying it. Some New Age spiritualism says to destroy the ego. So don't do that unless you want to regress to an instinctual animal-like nature, which is not a higher consciousness. Instead, Use your ego as a powerful tool of consciousness while taking care to not identify with it. 
which is the mistake that most humans make. They think that they are the ego, but we know that we are not. We are higher than the ego, but the ego is a powerful tool. The second spiritual lie is that unconditional love will change the world. While it is true that we need a hell of a lot more love in the world, the unfortunate fact of the matter is that unconditional love and acceptance actually leads to more hate. I know that that seems contradictory, but in actuality it's not, so I'll explain. This is known as Karl Popper's paradox of intolerance. Karl Popper said, if we extend unlimited tolerance even to those who are intolerant, if we are not prepared to defend a tolerant society against the onslaught of the intolerant, then the tolerant will be destroyed and tolerance with them. In order to maintain a tolerant society, the society must be intolerant of intolerance. What this means is that there are a lot of hateful, violent, sexist, racist, homophobic people out there, and if you accept them, you're allowing their hateful ideas to spread. Accepting intolerant ideologies into your society leads to the breeding of intolerance. Unfortunately, there's a lot of hateful ideologies out there, and because of that, we don't have the freedom to love. I mean, just look at all the viral videos going around right now of all the hateful people. We need to build a new rational society that does away with all the hateful and intolerant ideologies so that we can finally live in a loving world. We do need a lot more love in this world, but many new age spiritual teachings will tell you to give unconditional love and acceptance to everyone, no matter what. Well, if you hug a murderer, they're just going to stab you in the back. It's been said that any religion that tells you to love your enemies was created by your enemies. The rich elite rulers of this world love the idea of unconditional love because they know that that means you'll never stand up to them and they can continue trampling all over you. Love isn't what is going to change the world. Love is what we get when we change the world. So let's build a new world free from hate so that we can finally have the freedom to love. The third spiritual lie is that you can't know ultimate reality. Now, there's a lot of this going around. Many will say that knowledge of ultimate existence is beyond our grasp. Now, this is horrible. A system of enlightenment is about knowledge and understanding, not anti-knowledge. Be very suspicious of any ideology claiming to teach enlightenment that says that you can't know. The philosopher Immanuel Kant also believed this. You see, he called the ultimate reality the noumenal realm and said that it was beyond our ability to rationally know. Many New Age spiritualists will often ascribe properties to this supposedly unknowable reality. For example, that ultimate reality is one. The fallacy here is that if ultimate reality was truly unknowable, you wouldn't know of its existence, let alone any of its properties. To know that it exists is to know something about it, much less to say that it's one or give it any other kind of properties. Hegel said, to be aware of limitations is already to be beyond them. So if you know that it exists, it means that you can know something about it and that it's knowable. Hegel's philosophy was antithetical to Kant's and Hegel knew that we are existence coming to know ourselves through ourselves. It's all about knowledge. Let me put it this way. We are all reality. This is a mathematical reality and we are mathematical beings. We can know reality because it is what we are. Anyone that tells you that you can't know true reality is telling you that you can't know yourself, which is the opposite of enlightenment. Inscribed at the entrance to the Oracle of Delphi were the words, know thyself. And another popular aphorism says, know thyself and you will know the universe and the gods. That's because we are the universe and the gods. True enlightenment is all about knowledge. How crazy does someone have to be to actually try to become enlightened through a system that tells you that you can't know? Any system that tells you that you can't know is anti-enlightenment, it's the opposite, and it's trying to steal your power. Beware of a system telling you you can't know because it's a system of anti-knowledge. We are the universe and we are the gods and we can know ourselves. The fourth spiritual lie is that we are one. While it is true that we are one, but it's not true in the way that many spiritual beliefs will propose. You see, they propose that we are all one mind and that's it, when in actuality, we are both one and many at the same time. 
So let me explain the difference here. Spiritual beliefs usually propose that individuality is an illusion and that ultimately we are one cosmic mind and that's it. They often compare it to drops of water being dissolved into the ocean, where the individual drops are illusory individual selves and the ocean is the one cosmic mind. Another way to look at this is like bubbles in the ocean. The ocean as the one mind is all that really exists, while the individual bubbles depend on the ocean for their existence. In actuality, the opposite is true. You see, we are all individual eternal minds, and together we form the one cosmic mind. We don't depend on the one for our existence, it depends on us. If you removed the individual minds, the one mind would no longer exist, because it literally is the collection. Think of it like bricks and a house. The house depends on the bricks for its existence. Remove the bricks and the house no longer exists. So we are both one and many at the same time. Our eternal individual selves will never dissolve and be absorbed into a cosmic oneness. However, once every mind in existence is working together in perfect harmony, it will be as though we were one mind. We can know that there are many minds rather than just one rationally because there is no sufficient reason for there to be only one cosmic mind. If one is rationally possible, then there is nothing to prevent many from being possible. So we are both one and many. We are all eternal individual nodes that form the one mind. The fifth spiritual lie is that the universe will take care of you. This idea is really attractive, but dangerously similar to mainstream religion. It's looking for a father figure, a god in the sky to take care of everything, a savior. Look, we are the universe, so we can take care of ourselves, okay? We don't need an external god, and we don't need a savior. We are God, we are our own saviors, and we are the universe. Take a look at some of these spiritual memes. You have to believe the universe will provide. Now, look at how nefarious this is. If you just replace the words believe with faith and universe with God, it becomes exactly like mainstream fundamentalist religion. You have to have faith and God will provide. Here's another. I trust the universe will provide for my every need. Just swap out the words and you get, I have faith God will provide. If you want to become enlightened, then it's time to throw out this mainstream religious mindset. People are in an infantile state and they don't want to step into their power. They want to feel safe and have a father figure in the sky looking out for them. We are God and we are the universe. The universe isn't going to provide just because you believe it will. You are the master of your reality, and we are the masters of all reality. Praying to God isn't going to help, and neither will believing in the universe. You are the universe, and we are God, and we have the power to help ourselves. So take responsibility for your life. It's time to change ourselves, our lives, and the world and no amount of faith in God or the universe is going to do it. A steadfast determination and an iron will guided by reason is what will allow us to actualize ourselves and remake the world. Don't look to a savior, we are our saviors. Don't look to a God, we are God. Don't look to the universe, we are the universe. Watch out for the spiritual lies and traps that limit you and your power. So tell me what you think in the comments, and tell me of other spiritual traps that you might have heard of. You see, we are a system of what you might call rational spirituality. So watch my video called The New Spirituality, Can Spirituality Be Rational? to find out more about who we are. Join our War of the Mind by subscribing right now, and a big shout out to all my supporters on Patreon. Consider supporting on Patreon to get access to our secret live streams. My name is Morg, and I am Hyperion. Ad Astra to the stars.